Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to determine the empirical and molecular formulas from the mass data. So, for example, we have a sample that's been analyzed, and we've been told the mass of each of the elements in our sample. In this case, we have a sample that was analyzed and found to contain 55.2 grams of carbon, 6.2 grams of hydrogen, and 73.6 grams of oxygen. We're also told the molar mass or the molar weight of our compound is 176.12 grams per mole. We want to know what the empirical and what the molecular formulas are. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write down each of the elements that we're given and then the mass of each of the elements in our analysis. So the first one in this case is carbon. And we're told we have 55 0.2 grams of carbon. Then we have hydrogen, and we have 6.2 grams of hydrogen. And then finally, we have oxygen. And in our sample, we had 73.2 six grams of oxygen. Now you need to remember in your chemical formula, the chemical formula tells you the ratio of the number of atoms of each element. It's not the ratio of the masses of each element. It's the ratio of the number of, <clears throat> of atoms of each element. Therefore, we have to convert our mass values into mole values. So the way we do that, of course, is using the molar mass. So for the molar mass of carbon, we can convert grams of carbon into moles of carbon using the molar mass of carbon, which is 12 grams. Our grams are going to cancel, and we're left with that we had 4.6 moles of carbon. Okay, now we can do the same thing for the other two. We can convert grams of hydrogen into moles of hydrogen using the molar mass of hydrogen. Because we know that one mole of hydrogen has a mass of just about 1.01 .01 grams. So therefore we know that our sample contained one, whoops, contained 6.14 moles of hydrogen. And we do the same thing finally for oxygen. We can convert grams of oxygen into moles of oxygen using the molar mass of oxygen. One mole being 16.00 grams. Grams cancel. We're left with moles and we know we have 4.58 moles of oxygen. Okay, so the first step we've completed We've taken our gram values and converted them into moles. And now we want to figure out what the ratio is of the number of each um, of moles of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. And the simplest way to do that is to divide each of the molar values by the smallest molar value. So oxygen has the smallest molar value, 4.58. So we're going to divide all three of our molar values by the molar value for oxygen, the smallest of the three. So 4.58. And if we divide 4.60 by 4.58, we get just about one, the moles cancel. It's a unitless number. We do the same thing for hydrogen. 6.14 divided by 4.58. Once again, the moles cancel, and we get 1.34. We're going to do this also, of course, for oxygen. 4.58 divided by 4.58 is, you guessed it, 1. So now we know the molar ratios, or the ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen, the ratio of the number of atoms of each of those elements in our chemical formula or in our molecule is 1 to 1.34 to 1 for carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. 
Now, as you know, the chemical formula cannot contain a decimal number or a fraction. They have to be whole numbers. So we have a problem here. We have to convert or change this value into a whole number. Now, what can we do? Well, we're going to multiply 1.34 by something to get a whole number. We want to get the lowest whole number. If we multiply it by 2, we won't get a whole number. If we multiply it by 3, we will get a whole number. So we're going to multiply 1.34 times 3. If you do that, you get 4. Well, if you multiply the hydrogen value by 3, you also have to do the same thing for the carbon. And of course, you have to do the same thing for the oxygen. And therefore, we now know that the ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen is 3 to 4 to 3. And that gives us our empirical formula. So we're going to write down here below that the empirical formula for our compound is C3. H4O3. That is the empirical formula. Now we were also asked to find the molecular formula. Now in order to get the molecular formula, we have to compare the molecular weight to the empirical weight. And we can find the empirical weight using our empirical formula. Three carbons, three times six, it can be 3 times 12 is 36, plus 4 hydrogens is 4, plus 3 oxygens is going to be equal to 88 grams per mole. So the empirical weight of our compound based on the empirical formula is 88 grams per mole. Now, we were told above in the problem that the molar mass, which is in this case the same thing as the empirical, excuse me, the molar weight, the molecular weight is 176. So the molecular weight is 176.12 grams per mole. And the empirical weight, which we just figured out, just calculated from our empirical formula, is 88 grams per mole. Our units cancel, and we come up with 2. Now, what does this 2 tell us? This 2 tell us, tells us that in our molecular weight, we have two empirical formula units. Okay, Each molecule contains two empirical formula units, so therefore, our molecular formula, we have to multiply our empirical formula by 2. So we get C6... H8O6, and that is our molecular formula. All right, we have our empirical formula is C3H4O3. We know that our molecular formula contains two empirical formula units, so therefore our molecular formula is C6H8O6. All right, so we figured out the empirical formula and the molecular formula and I think if you follow those steps, that you'll be successful. All right. Thank you very much. And I hope that was helpful.